Hi, my name is Glory. I'm a second year student studying at the Bartlett School of Architecture in London, originally from Hong Kong. And I'm Yan Shan, a second year architecture student, and I'm into musicals, oil painting, movies, and embarrassingly into self help and Richie Biscuits. You're listening to Designing Thoughts with the Archie Gals, a podcast where we talk about working and creativity, living well, the human condition with relationships, and life experiences. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast. So, I'm your host, Glory, and this is my co host, Yen Shan. So, today we're going to be talking about how to maintain a healthy lifestyle in university from the perspective of diet, cooking, and exercise. And hopefully, that will be interesting for you to listen along to us, too. So, a bit of background information both Yen Shan and I are overseas students. So, I'm from Hong Kong, and Yen Shan's from Malaysia. So, it's a bit of a big step for us to start. You know, taking care of ourselves and being more independent、uh, during university. So, yeah. Yeah. So, the first thing we were thinking of talking about, so, oh, I, I guess you found a bit of background. So, both of us、um, go to uni in London and we both do architecture there as well. So, I guess it involves quite a lot of co-、uh, going to the studio and like hands on stuff in the architecture department, but also. We try to do things outside of uni sometimes, but it doesn't always work. So I guess that maintaining a healthy lifestyle is pretty important because we spend quite a lot of time outside the house. Yeah, definitely. And I think also just the workload for architecture is quite heavy. Like, if you're not doing anything else, you're sort of expected to be in the studio. Like, that's where you would find most students working on your projects, like, nonstop. So that's sort of just like, How our everyday life is during university life. So, I think this sort of brings in like some problems with, you know, finding like the work life balance in this sense, in this case, like、um, sort of cooking healthy stuff for yourself and then like finding time to do exercise out of your free time when you still have such a busy schedule.、Um, so, I know that I kind of struggled with this a little bit、um, in the very beginning, and I think I made an effort trying to find time. To you know, make time to do things that are、um, benefit my health personally instead of just focusing on the academics. Did you also struggle yeah, with this、I、as well? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think especially with like the balance, but also it's like because not go, going to uni and living by yourself for the first time, it's like quite hard to know how much exercise to do or like where to, especially if I hadn't been active before. Um, that active before, and it was hard to balance this with like cooking my own meals and being able to control my diet all at once. Yeah, so I guess we'll start off with exercise and with tracking the exercise specifically.、Mm. So, I guess for me personally, I think I was quite active before going to uni. Yan Shai can talk about your experience later, but、um, I think I was pretty active even back in like secondary school. I think since childhood, like I was just pretty active. Like I did a lot of swimming, and then I did like a lot of badminton after that.、Um, and then prior to that, I also did quite a bit of yoga as well. So I think I had quite a bit of base knowledge of like, you know, exercise is good for you. You should keep doing it. But I derived a lot of fun from it as well. So I think going to uni, like, I made an effort to join、um, societies with stuff that interests me. So I think I did dance and、um, badminton. But I think, again, like the timing with architecture is just very demanding. Like they kind of expect you to go to studio on the weekends, like full day, Saturday and Sunday as well. So it was just very hard to maintain the balance, especially with societies. It's a group thing. So you have to show up when the group is there. But the thing is with architecture, when you have group projects, they also expect you to show up. So at the time, like, I would just put architecture first, you know, because it's like my main thing. So, like, societies would take like a step back. So, at the time, I think I sort of focused more on individual exercise. So, I signed up for like a gym membership. And I just, you know, because it's more flexible that way. So, I went whenever I was free. And I tried to build a routine out of that. Like, I would go in the morning before studio starts. Because, like, then I can get exercise out of the way and then I would just head to studio and do stuff. How did you manage, you know, your time for exercise, Yan Shan? Yeah, so I joined the cheerleading society because I do like cheerleading and dancing. And I didn't join a gym because I thought,、oh. I actually thought that if I joined cheerleading society, I could use the gym, like, some, like, when, like when they have practices in the, in the gym, which is kind of true, I could. But then also, like, I wouldn't do that、really? after a 
a workout, like a gym, like a cheerleading session, I wouldn't go and do exercise afterwards because that's kind of strange. And then I also joined a few uh, Malaysian Why is it night dancers. I think it's just too much exercise for me. <laughs> Wasn't used to that much exercise. <laughs> so, and so okay. because of that, um, during the yeah, but then I, I also realized, I think the same like you, I realized that it wasn't enough time to do something which other people were also committed to, which I had to show up for. The thing about cheer was that I had, to, I had to travel about an hour to the cheer studio sometimes, depending on where it was. It's either near school or super far. And if it was far, I had to travel really far. And I remember I would bail on group projects at school for that, which is really bad. So then I quit that. And then after that, got a gym membership, mainly because, oh, actually, last year I... Um, my friends and I wanted to cycle to the France. Yeah, we, we went to cycle to France, so we, had, we were meant to train for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I joined the gym, Yeah. and then I went for, I found like exercise classes at the gym, and I, I found out I really, really like exercise classes, like spin classes. It's like a pretty basic thing, basic, not like essential, but basic like, like it's like a brunch mom or like a Pilates mom thing to do. But I really did like it. And <laughs> it was like, yeah, a good workout. So that was really nice because I also went with my friend. So then was, that was when I realized like going going to do this kind of stuff with other people is actually really nice. If there's like low commitment as compared to like going to do cheer, which had like lots of people. And if I didn't show up, I had to come up with an excuse why. And and it was just, it was just much easier this way. So then... After that, I started going for these classes, but even then I didn't go very often. And, but slowly, I guess it became more consistent, especially after leaving university, but I guess that, that's like a different thing to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely relate to the part with the classes because I feel like, I, I mean, I said this before, but I just feel like doing an, a workout by, your, by yourself is different to joining a class because mm. when you have a class, like you have other people to motivate you, you know, like you see everybody doing stuff and you're like, oh, if they're doing it, then I have to do it too. You know, I have to maintain the same level or like for that same amount of time that they're doing it. So like, I, I think that's a good motivation. Like you can't leave halfway through class. You're like, sorry, guys, I can't <laughs> take this anymore. You yeah. know, like that's why I feel like classes are really good. Yeah, but at the same time, it's, like, less commitment than, like, dancing. Yeah, yeah. Because you just sign up, like, whenever you want. Um, And, like, I try to do half and half. Like, I feel like if I feel very, like, no motivation, I'll just, like, force myself to join a class. But if I do feel motivated, then I will, like, you know, do workouts that I enjoy by myself. Um, But, yeah. So, how did you schedule your routine? Because, as I said, like, for me, like, I did it, like... Like, hey, because I know I'm such a grandma. Like, I wake up at 7, right? And then I go straight to the gym and, like, work out for, like, an hour. And then I go to studio. So that's my routine. Like, I wake up super early. So I get it out of the way in the beginning. What about you? Yeah, so um, I guess because my friend was like you, so she... So I went for spin classes, like, in the morning as well. I actually bumped into you a few times at the gym, to be fair. And then... Um, yeah. Uh, but then after that... I usually like to go like at night. So after going to studio, I remember once, sometimes I even went in the middle of the day, like in the middle of studio, then I would go because I feel oh, wow. like I need it uh, to do something different. But I, I do that quite often though. Like even now my routine is to try to do gym um, either at the start of the day to get out of the way, but I also like to do it like in the middle of the afternoon. So like three or 4 p.m. Mm-hmm just to like get out something different yeah. and then come back and continue working because I, I work at night yeah I, yeah I think that's fair like I feel like having like using exercise as a break is like good because you get like a like you kind of refresh your mind and then you get like a release of dopamine and then like you can have the the mindset to work afterwards so yeah I think it's good um yeah I, and I I mean there's a lot of myths online that say like oh working out in the morning is better than working out at night or like night is better than the morning but to be honest like there's not much difference I feel like as long as you move your body physically I think it's good either way like the timing doesn't really matter you know yeah what is your um exercise schedule like as in like do you do do you exercise every day and then like do you do like cardio and uh, I don't know what else you do to be honest <laughs> cardio and and like hits and stuff every day or is it like different so during my during my first year in university my schedule was mostly like a cardio warm-up like running like high intensity stuff and then after that I would 
like do like strength training like sometimes i would use the machine sometimes i don't like sometimes i might just use a mat and then do like those strength training exercise like arm balance like core and mm-hmm. then like i think it strengthens your muscles a lot and then i think that like at least personally for me like that feels very good physically and then Sometimes on the weekends, like when I have more time and I know what my timetable actually looks like, because for architecture students, you never know what your timetable looks at until the day before. So when I have time on the weekends, I will um, join like classes, maybe mm-hmm. like late mornings. And then like there's so there's a bit more variety depending on the timings and like where I'm at and like how it is. My my routine kind of switches up. So like in second year when everything was remote, I did in early mornings, I did like a yoga workout. So it was kind of still strength training, but like with yoga. So it was a focus on more like um, strength training and also stretching um, in comparison to like first year when I was still doing a lot of cardio. But like now when I'm back at home, like during summer, like I would focus a lot on like I did a lot of cardio because I'm doing badminton again. So it's a lot of cardio, I would say. But yeah, mm-hmm. what about you? I think I would do... I just I I think in first year I really didn't know what I was doing like I didn't know the right ratio of of like weights to so I just like kind of used like Instagram which is really bad like to it's like look at Instagram and see what other people are doing and then to like copy so I I think I did um probably three days of cardio and my cardio is literally just either running or spinning for like half an hour forty five minutes and then and then do maybe one or two days. Oh, actually, to be fair, I just did it on the same day. I would do, like, cardio, and then after that, I would do, like, cir- like weight circuits with weights. And then I would do that maybe, like, three, four times a day, but I wasn't very consistent. But then after lockdown started, and then I started going to exercise classes regularly, um, then that was really good. But then I went maybe, like, three, four times a week to, like, a really intense spin or hit class. And that was really nice. So I realized I really liked, like, intense classes and then when I came back and in second year uh, and I couldn't go to the gym anymore because they were they were closed then I just did like home workouts but I did I think I'm not sure this is healthy but I did one hit workout every day which is a bit much so and it was like very similar hit workouts as well so I'm not sure that's a good thing but it was yeah it was exercise but I think it's good like I mean change it up when you feel like it gets boring But I feel like, I mean, the ultimate thing is not really, like, what's the perfect workout, but more Mm -hmm. so just, like, what do you enjoy and, like, what your body is is enjoying and, like, is, like, happy with doing. Because I think, like, unless you're, like, a very hardcore, like, bodybuilder, you know, like, I think it doesn't really matter, like, as long as your body is moving. So it's not really about, like, what ratio you have. Obviously, I think having both is good, but, like, don't put too much spot in it. I think when your focus is about, like, health, it doesn't really matter like yeah. the certain like nitty gritties of like what you're doing but yeah. yeah I think that's good because I feel like for a lot of the time my my motivation to exercise is related to like looking better and I think like when, when I watch YouTube videos about people who like oh my um weight loss journey or whatever then they're like oh yeah I, I take tons of pictures and like yeah. I can see myself getting leaner and it's just so motivating and then it's also it's I mean that's good if that's what they want to do but it's also a bit helpful if you think that that's what exercise is for, I, I guess. Yeah, like for me, um, like looking at these things, the only thing I can like comment on is I feel like that's a short term goal. Like I feel like because health is just a long term goal, it's very easy to focus on that. Whereas with like looking at stuff online, it's very easy to lose focus of like why you're doing it. So you you don't really end up doing it especially if you're if you're doing exercises that you don't enjoy for the sake of like looking a certain way that's like even worse because it never like you can never sustain it you know so yeah. that's why i think it's so important to find exercise that you enjoy and like you really like doing yeah. and then your focus is on the health that's how i would say you can maintain it especially for people who are going to uni as well actually not even for uni like even just if you're working you know just in general like i think that's like my rule of thumb when it comes to exercise like just enjoy it and like appreciate the fact that you're able to move and like do physical exercise you know yeah that's really good I, but I guess there also things to like body image in general and how to eat healthily and how to because I remember once you 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 mentioned like intuitive eating is probably the most 
effective way of eating as in like it's the most natural but it's also very difficult to focus on that if you're thinking about like looking good or cutting or like losing weight yeah yeah that's true yeah i mean um the thing with like intuitive eating is um i i fully support it but then obviously i think for example like this is just purely my opinion all right like if somebody doesn't know the necessary things of like what is healthy and what they're supposed to be like eating you know like what actually means healthy eating to them then intuitive working intuitive eating doesn't work on them you know because they don't know what it is so how can they trust their intuition you know but i think Mm -hmm. for people who are like very well researched on the topic then i feel like it would be okay to like fully support intuitive eating for someone because the goal again is like to maintain health is not to look a certain way because like every body is different you know like you can't just say um i want to look a certain way but then that's not what your body feels comfortable with so I think the goal is always mm-hmm. to like focus on health because the thing with diets is again this is my opinion like I think all diets fail you know like every single diet is going to fail cuz it's not it's not sustainable in the long run because you're not really focusing on what your body actually needs you're just focusing on the wants you know mm-hmm. um yeah and I think it's just nice to I- implement this practice even in like university life I know some people like it's not going to be like a health conscious person like me but um I just think it's nice you know, to focus on something that's, you know, taking care of yourself because when all the focus is being put on your academics and your studies, it's easy to just lose track of taking care of yourself. So I feel like for anyone who's in university with a lot of workload or people who are working, it's nice to just like take a step back and like focusing on like how you feel and then like focusing on your health. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. what I would say. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's really helpful because I think especially in in, in first year, I would try to cook healthy and I mean, it, it would work because I guess you, you just buy the ingredients and then you cook <laughs> it and the, you don't buy snacks and stuff. But then I would also like binge eat on snacks often, like pretty often actually, because I think my body just needed like sugar and carbs and I just wasn't giving it enough in my regular meals because I, I would say like, oh, I don't need carbs. I can just have like veg and like a protein. I'll be fine. But then after that, I would like cave, especially in studio. Oh, it was so bad. It's like, it, cause like it, would be, it would be there the whole day. Then I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. So I would go and get like a bag of cookies, like an entire bag or like a box of grapes, like an entire box. And I would eat the whole thing, like the entire thing. It was so bad. And I would just be like sugar high for like a few hours and then crash. And I would feel so guilty. So I think that was quite bad Mm. but at the same time like cooking is good I think overall is good like I I I could prep my own meals I could decide what to eat it was like a good experience it just wasn't good when I didn't like listen to what I wanted to eat yeah I think that like I think the problem as in if you're okay with me like diagnose analyzing the problem obviously I just felt like like we shouldn't really demonize like carbs and sugars Because, like, it's going to be available to us, you know? Like, we can't, like, fully avoid it. I know some people can, but, like, maybe Mm -hmm. people with not so much willpower like us, maybe it's more difficult. Um, But um, I just feel like don't demonize, like, one food group, you know? Like, I think carbs in terms... Okay, obviously, like, if you say, like, processed carbs is bad, you know, like, white rice or, like, white bread or, like, simple sugars, like, obviously it's bad because you digest it really fast. But um, I would say complex carbs... It's, like, good. Because, I mean, it, it contains nutrients, you know, and carbs. Like, it's not all of them are bad. The reason why people demonize carbs is, I think it's just because it's, like, simplified carbs are linked with unhealthy foods. And also the fact that, like, because the calorie per gram or per volume is just higher in general. So people just, like, like just avoid the food group altogether. But I really don't think that's the right way of doing it. Because you're sort of missing out on a lot of, like, salts. And minerals that are found in carbohydrates you know this is like where intuitive eating comes in like you know focus on what you want at the moment because the thing is the more you don't give it to yourself the more you're probably gonna binge and crash because i've had similar experiences when like i didn't want to eat like that much snacks as well and then you kind of you reach a point where your mind just kind of like breaks down and you kind of can't control yourself anymore like this and un- like the subconscious like takes over and you're like i have to eat this so it, it gets pretty out of hand. So yeah, yeah, I think intuitive eating is good in that way. Yeah. I think the way someone explain, explained it to me was that like when you eat things like sugar and chocolate and 
uh, simple carbs, then you get like a big hit. Oh, your your insulin levels spike like really yeah. suddenly, and then like they drop as well. So then when you eat stuff which is like takes a longer time to digest, and then your insulin levels or even like fruits and veg, your insulin levels go up and they remain more stable because they go up slower. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Like because I would yeah. go into cycles of like binging and then feeling guilty and then binging and then feeling guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not really... I, I get the insulin thing, but I think it's also just the balance. Because, like, if you just purely eat, like, say, f- fruit and veg for, like, the rest of your life, like, you're not gonna feel like you, you know, you're you're satisfied, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. That's true. So, how was your um, eating habits, like, in uni? Like, I guess, did you did you pack food and then did you often go out? meals or like takeaway yeah so the thing i know you do a lot of home-cooked meals and i do a lot of home-cooked meals so we would sometimes share you know our food together (laughs) um but yeah i think i really enjoyed the process of like cooking my own food because i think like you know you put love for yourself you know like self-love obviously like you put love in your, your meals for yourself and also, you know, you know what's in there, you know, it's not like processed stuff and like, you know exactly what's in there and like the health stuff that you're focusing on. I think that was really important to me, at least. Um, I know a lot of people in uni like care about convenience a lot more because of the workload, but I try to make an effort to, you know, make um, meals for myself mm-hmm. and prioritize like my health. Because the way I sort of th- thought about it was when I went to university, I'm like, I'm going to be fully independent and I'm going to be the one taking care of myself. So I'm going to have to put more effort into like what I'm eating and, you know, actually have a chance of, um, you know, eating healthy like I want to be. So that's sort of how I looked at the situation, which is why I really enjoyed like cooking my own things. Um, but in terms of like eating out, I think it's also the fact that I wanted to save money as a student, you know, like I feel like cooking mm-hmm. your own meals are like just cheaper in general compared mm-hmm. if you were to buy something at a cafe or like a takeout place, you know, mm-hmm. but obviously I'm not against the idea of eating out. Like I'm not like a health freak where you can't like eat anything you want. So, but I think for eating out, I kind of mostly reserve it to like hang out with friends, you know, trying out different restaurants. Um, yeah, that's sort of how I would describe my eating habits. Yeah, and also I remember we used to cook together like with our friends a lot, and that was really really nice. Yeah, yeah. Because it wouldn't be like regular food; it would be like a bit more high end, I say. And then it almost felt like eating out. Okay, not really, but it almost felt like eating out. Because then you have like wine, mm. and it'd be really nice. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think once you have friends, you can bond with, and like you kind of have the same sort of health idea in the same direction it's really easy to sort of like cook meals together and it's a really nice bonding activity you know like i've oh, oh, to be fair like food is a very nice thing to bond over you know if you enjoy the same things um so yeah like i feel like the cooking thing was like a really nice way of like bonding with people and i like, started substituting for like taking out because it's like more authentic like home-cooked meals and then like you just kind of like bond with people like with how they cook like what they're cooking how they're cooking it um yeah, so yeah, it was a really nice activity, I feel like. So I feel like for people who are in university or like at work, I think it was just like a nice activity to not only focus on your health, depending on what you cook, obviously, but um, on your health, but also just like expanding your social life. Like I feel like there's a time where you like focus on yourself, like both physical and like mental health. You know? That's true. I thought that was really nice. I also really like going out because I th- okay I, th- I think I'm a bit different this way. Like I I also support saving money, but also I really like spending money on food. And also I really like the atmosphere of going to a restaurant and like eating at a restaurant. Not not necessarily like the food would be better than usually it would be quite good. But I like the experience of going out and then having a drink and then going to the restaurant with your friend or even by myself. So I think I would spend on that, which is why I did that more often than you. But I would never like take get takeaway because that just seems so strange. Like it will get soggy, and I mean I appreciate yeah. it's probably because I have a lot of time. Like I have like the luxury of time and the luxury of not needing to like work multiple jobs and do other things outside of school that I was able to cook and go out and eat. But I think it was really good that I managed to do that. Yeah, 
I mean, I'm definitely not against the idea of like going out, obviously. You probably do it more than me, but I can definitely appreciate like a good meal and a good restaurant. Like just, you know, like appreciating how it's cooked and like how the restaurant is laid out, you know, for us design geeks, you know, how how the food comes out and then like how the restaurant's laid out. I feel like that's all very nice, you know, appreciating the atmosphere. But yeah, the whole takeout thing doesn't make sense to me. Like lockdown makes sense because, you know, if you can't go to restaurants, like I, it would make sense. But then I feel like it's like doing takeout sort of takes away the magic and the atmosphere of like mm-hmm. dining dining in a restaurant. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. But again, like I would understand why I would understand why people would do takeouts. Like I have a I have a story for this. But <laughs> basically, I know a lot of people in uni who, you know, I think this is just general like like I'm not criticizing anyone because I totally understand why people would do takeouts. Like, it's mostly for convenience, especially if you don't have an interest or passion in cooking. Like, I feel like for both of us, we were kind of influenced by our families. Like, we like to cook Mm -hmm. prior to even going to uni. So it was, like, easier for us to get into it. But for some people who, like, never cooked in their lives, you know, they might stick with, like, canteen food or, um, you know, just doing takeouts because that's what's easier for them to do. Um, Mm -hmm. So I totally get it. I mean, there's a story of like, there's these two guys in my flat in first year. And I remember them just ordering takeout like every single day. The (laughs) trash can was just full of takeout containers. And every day I would go in the kitchen and I'll be like, oh my God, that's so many takeout boxes. (laughs) But the thing is, I can't say anything because the the trash can was just overflowing. So it was kind of, kind of scary, I guess. Like the cleaner got mad and she yelled at me. And I was like, um, it's it's my flatmates, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I guess the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that like I totally get it, you know, for convenience wise. But I would I I guess my advice for people who kind of struggle with cooking things themselves but want to go towards the direction of like healthy eating, I would say like start small. Like maybe like cook your breakfast for yourself first. And then if you really struggle to find the time like you can start with meal prepping. So I did a bit of meal prepping in my first year as well. I actually forgot to touch on touch up on this topic, but I would focus like I would put all of my cooking time on Sunday, like Sunday afternoon. So I would like batch prepare like everything. So I would have like my lunch boxes ready to go like on Monday, like Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday. I don't know. But yeah, so like basically you have like your meals already prepped for school like when you go there then you can just reheat it and then you can have that instead of like keep ordering takeouts you know like I feel like that would be a good practice yeah I remember you had that but also I guess like you would get bored (laughs) I got bored of the food which I prepped yeah that's one of yeah that's one of the problems with meal prepping is like you get sort of get bored with the things you make but I mean Mm -hmm. to be fair like um there's a lot of videos online that teach you how to like meal prep more efficiently and I think there were some videos talking about like how to make it not boring so um yeah, I think definitely because there's so much resources online nowadays anyway. So I think like health, starting to healthy eat is really not a problem per- yeah. personally for me. So, yeah. Yeah. I also think like um, that actually take, taking out because I, I also do this sometimes. Like I get takeout, but I like expand the meal. If that makes sense. Like I add veg and I cook a rice. So like, I just get the mains from the takeout because I want to taste it. Like, I want the taste of, like, fried chicken, which I don't do myself at home. Or, like, I want, like, like that particular, like, sweet sour chicken or, like, particular duck wrap from somewhere. Mm. Then I, I make a veg side and rice and then I add to it. So I think that's also better. At least you're cooking some things and you know what goes into the things which you cook, like, the nutrients that go into the things that you make. Yeah. And I remember yeah. that the, the, yeah. there's, like, a YouTube video which you both followed. I forgot her name, damn, but I'll link it. Pick up limes. She's my favorite. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's so like wholesome. I love her. <laughs> yeah, so people for people who don't know, um, the channel we're talking about is called Pick Up Limes on YouTube, and she does a lot of like healthy, um, vegan meals, and she did a lot of like meal prepping ideas, and it's just a lot of like very easy and wholesome recipes that you can follow, and I'm a big fan of her. Um, but yeah, and you know, because I'm focusing on health, I think I'm, I'm sort of like a health nut, like a health geek, you know, like I I really like cooking healthy foods and, you know, I'm also vegan, but that's like a topic for another episode. So um, yeah, I think like you can start there or, you know, it doesn't matter what your dietary preference is. Once you type it on 
like YouTube, there's probably going to be lots of options. So, you know, just have fun and experiment, I would mm, say. Yeah. So I guess going into eating and eating habits as well, like, did you ever feel, this is not really related, but did you ever feel pressure to like do a lot of drinking? Because I guess what we're talking about is all well and good, but it doesn't really relate to like the uni experience, the typical uni experience where you expected to go out yeah. partying and drinking and stuff. So did you feel? Yeah, I think that was something like I wanted to talk about because I think it's still, t- I mean, I think drinking culture is like sort of tied in between social life, but also like, health because i mean it is a health issue mm-hmm. right not really an issue like it's t- mm-hmm. it's just tied into health you know because mm-hmm. i feel like um like at university you're sort of expected not really expected but like you kind of sort of have an idea that you should be doing this like yeah you know because it's just a culture especially like in london like there's like a bar culture like it, it's, sort of, it's just sort of like what you do so you're kind of just you know you feel like you have to be drinking i don't know so i'm yeah. not a big drinker obviously like i prefer to stay like sober but i don't mind like you know one to two glasses or whatever um i'm not i i don't go against that um but personally i just don't drink that much because i feel like i can okay like a to save money <laughs> and like b i feel like i can still have fun without under without being under the influence of alcohol that's sort of mm-hmm. how i would say it that's good. I think I have a more destructive relationship to alcohol <laughs> um, because I enjoy. I I don't think like I wouldn't drink by myself to get drunk. So I think I do it socially, which is good. So it's not mm, it's yeah. not to like for because I'm addicted to it. Hopefully, but anyway. So then, but but I do enjoy like drinking until like not not remembering the next day or like drinking until like it like. I can't remember and things go very blurry. So I think that was really bad. But I don't think that was because of peer pressure. I think that was mm. because I was with I was with friends when I drank, but not like it wasn't because they were forcing me to drink or anything. It was just because I really liked the mm. feeling. So I guess it's like recognizing that that's that we, that's actually actually t- taking it too far and like drinking just for the um drinking just to forget is really not very sustainable. So I think this reached like a point last summer where it was like pretty bad and I wouldn't I would feel really bad the next day so then now I just do that I don't do that anymore to be fair I just drink I stop when I feel like it's getting to be too much and that's Mm. been good but also I guess people drink for other reasons right like like, people drink to go out to go bars and stuff and I mean that's not been very relevant recently but before this I think drinking to me was also to socialize and I also found that I socialize better not in a club format like clubbing was for a very specific yeah or or like with friends that I had already so like drinking to me was like for dinner and stuff which is really good yeah 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 I think so too like definitely in the terms of like a social viewpoint like I can totally like appreciate that that's sort of like the only situations where I would do it like I don't think I like drink alone like same as you like i don't just drink alone you know <laughs> like although um, it's not, actually not... pretty um popular among the people in architecture i feel <laughs> like these people in the studio really? to drink while like do while in studio i think so i'm not sure like quite a lot of famous maybe maybe it's like that. a creative stimuli yeah maybe it stimulates your creativity i don't know yeah. i never used it but then again like maybe i'm just a boring person like i don't use any like stimuli to like stimulate my creativity like i don't drink coffee or anything so um yeah but to be fair like i i feel like for drinking like do does it ever like cross your mind regarding like the health front or do you just like not care what when you're in the moment yeah oh it doesn't really cross my mind it crosses my mind the next day when i feel horrible and i can't eat but it doesn't i don't think about it at this time which i think is bad like i feel like like yeah like like the way you think about it is probably healthier where it's about keeping your health on track yeah but then again like like everyone's not me so like maybe for some people like the thing i'm doing right now is like more too extreme for them especially for people who like you know enjoy alcohol like I can totally see, like, how I would be, like, too extreme. But um, I think just, like, keeping track of, like, what you're doing, you know, I think it's it's good. Like, I think just if you're having time out with friends, like, just enjoy it. 
like obviously like not to the point where you know every day you're you're like can't remember because i know even for you like you won't do it every single day right like say like in a week it might be like once yeah one uh not even once a week i think it's like less yeah exactly yeah so i feel like it's fine because it's like a very occasional thing so i think it's all right you know and i'm not trying Mm -hmm. to say that like what i'm doing is right or what i'm doing is perfect because like you know everyone has different lifestyles you know like for us architecture students we have like a different way like our, our our schedules are different compared to say if someone was working in an office so i think it's just different and say if you're working in an office and you have a lot of like business um gatherings you have to attend and that requires you to do social drinking like i would understand you know so i think just like focus on yourself and then like see like see how your schedule works with like what you're eating and what you're yeah. doing you know i think that's like a really good point in general like for yeah. for even like deciding in your exercise habits and your eating habits yeah because it's just all very like personal i think it's like hard to prescribe anything or saying what i'm doing is right you know and i think bringing back to okay this is like more personal like for architecture or maybe not architecture maybe just like in university in general like i think there's just a lot of like glorification of like doing a lot which kind of leads to the the whole point of like neglecting yourself like having irregular meals and then like do taking having takeouts and then also like you know like staying up late and then like like just a lot of glorification of staying up late and then like having drinks with people but then like still able to do your work I feel like it's just kind of self-destructive because I feel like a lot of people they sort of treat staying up or like not being like not taking care of her not taking care of themselves as a way to like sort of brag you know like yeah. not, not like not throwing shade at anyone but it's kind of like saying like oh yeah last night I stayed up until four or like I didn't even have dinner but you know I, I finished my drawing you know sort of stuff like that like I don't I feel like we should work towards like not, like, not, this is not normalizing that kind show- of activity yeah like it's not yeah. something we should show off about yeah that's sort of what I want yeah to definitely say. Like, yeah and I think maybe when when we all sort of recognize that this is not like what we should be doing maybe then like sort of focusing on a healthy lifestyle would just be like more accepted and like um like easier to accept for people because i remember like saying that oh, i'm focusing on health and you know maybe that would just be like boring to some people or like i'm being too much of like a control freak to myself you know but i think it was just me trying to prioritize my health so yeah that's just sort of what i would say like it's just about like the work culture and like you know, student life culture that sort of brings the sort of, like, weirdness into the whole equation, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I really agree. And, but, 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 but also, I, I get why sometimes even I feel the need to be suffering to produce creative work because I f- it's, it's how it's portrayed to be created. Like, artists are meant to be suffering. I think we covered this in the last episode a bit, but also, like... It kind of relates, I guess. Um, But yeah, Yeah, but I feel like that's not healthy. But also like doing that once in a while, like doing everything once in a while or binging once in a while, letting yourself go once in a while. I think it's fine if you like know how, if you're like 80%, 90% of the time, you're like doing your best to be like best to yourself, (laughs) etc. Yeah, because the point is not to have like a perfect lifestyle, like a perfect healthy lifestyle where you're just like, eating clean like 100% of the time like that's not the goal I think the goal is just to like you know the 80-20 rule where you're like doing well 80% of the time and you can like eat a bit of like unhealthy stuff or like you know chill for like the other 20% because I think having like a like a sort of like kind of imperfect life is sort of like what life is about anyways like because you you can't like sustain perfection you know for the rest Mm -hmm. of your life so you have to like let loose once in a while but yeah yeah, I think that was a good coverage. So I think just to like conclude and recap, like I think the whole like culture in university is just sort of like, despite people knowing stuff is like unhealthy or they think they know like, you know, like internally that healthy eating is like important, but they sort of like just kind of disregard it because of convenience and like um workload and like using being busy as like an excuse or like a reason to not focus on their own health. So I think the way I would say to like maintain a healthy lifestyle, like not just directed to students, like even for people who are working, like I would say find like find your why, 
like you know not focusing so much on like the way you look but like using health as like a long-term goal to sustain what you're doing now say like eating healthy or like working out regularly like using health as a long-term goal i think is more sustainable in the long run and also like focusing on like i think this is more like um a tip for people who are like maybe like eating around your campus or like at office like focusing what foods are available in your area and then so you can sort of plan out what you're gonna eat because i think eating healthy like takes a lot of planning ahead as well so like you have to plan ahead and maybe like meal prep you know maybe that's what you're what you want to focus on like developing and then also not be obsessed with like you know tracking and like exactly what you're eating like i think focus on intuitive eating which also feeds into the whole point of focusing on your health and then yeah and also just doing a lot of research about what it means to you you know before jumping on the bandwagon because without knowing the full picture it's very easy to fall off and like you know you're like oh this is just useless i'll just go back to my old habits but yeah that's what i would yeah. say like this, to summarize it what do you have anything else to add yeah but i think to yeah just to caveat what is it like i think this is coming from a standpoint where we are, we are funded fully funded at university like we don't need to work a part-time job i like I, I remember some days coming back from teaching tuition or like coming back from a really late practice and i would just be like so hungry and tired that i would stop um from tuition on the way home to like buy a snack and then i would eat it on the way home and i would finish the entire snack by the time i reach home then i was like oh yeah i'm done i don't need dinner so i think it's like it's very different when you have to work and when you when like you have to yeah. sustain yourself in a different way and this i know this requires like a lot of luxury and planning but i do think that it's mostly possible so yeah that's, that's my caveat yeah i think it's mostly just about recognizing like our position and like the privilege we have to be able to sort of make these choices um because it might not be like accessible to anyone so yeah i think that's a good point yeah Shan, that you brought it up and yeah i think that's a good point to end on like just you know focus on yourself focus on your body like what you need and i think it will be a great start from there so yeah, yeah. thank you for listening thank you